Okay, well, it it seems that uh, I am receiving super chats, but it doesn't show up on my screen, and that's kind of weird. I had one of those little text chat sessions with、uh, YouTube rewards, whatever, and they actually showed me the number of people who've actually William O'Leary and a number of people that have actually donated. However, my screen wasn't lighting up in rainbows. So I asked him. I said, "What's the problem here?" I, I don't know. We never resolved that. But apparently, apparently, according to YouTube, and they showed me the donations, that I'm actually getting donations. I mean, ah,、uh, okay. Well, all right. I guess when I went to my analytics, it was showing that. Well, as far as my、uh, revenue. It, It was shown that there were some donations, but I don't know. It was really strange why my screen didn't actually light up. Show me these beautiful colors, these absolutely beautiful rainbow colors. Very strange, huh? Oh man, I've been busy. Who says I don't do nothing around this house? I've cleaned out the cutlery drawers, everything, every individual fork and knife, utensil. Pulled out the stove, cleaned around that on the floor. I swept and I mopped. I've been doing laundry around the house. Yeah, I'm the house bitch.、Uh, I just look. I I just like to contribute. That's all. I mean, I love contributing. I got to do my part around here too. After all, I'm I'm a kept man, and I I got to do my part. You know how that is. Well, maybe you don't. <laughs> But I enjoy doing the chores. But yeah, apparently the、uh, super chats are going through. I just never see it on my comment section on my screen. Is that something? Wow.、Uh, does somebody have a live show going on right now? I realize it won't be on a couple of minutes, but just curious. I didn't check. I've been, you know, I've been busy, 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 I, and I like being busy. Now I haven't got on the treadmill yet. I'm going to wait maybe another half an hour, play something on there I can listen to on the phone or something. And, Keep my mind occupied, but there, you know, there are chores that have to be done. You know, when you own a spectacular house like mine, large as it is, there's a lot of rooms to clean, floors to sweep. We got two dogs. You know, we track dirt in the house. We don't take our shoes off, and a lot of people times we don't.、Uh, so that's that's what's going on with that. It's it's high maintenance. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's high maintenance.、So、my sweetie's out there doing her regular little sweeping of leaves, and you know we have a routine that we do every day to upkeep the property. The Ponderosa, the Ponderosa needs maintenance. It's always going to need maintenance. That's just part, just part of home ownership. Like how well I took care of my house in Hawaii. I was meticulous. Meticulous, absolutely meticulous, and I tried not to let anything go. Something needed to be replaced. I replace it, painting, you name it. You know, putting chlorine in my catchment tank, which I did every month, every month to make sure that the water was sanitary. Every single month, every single month, it was two ounces of chlorine to every thousand gallons. Of water,、mm. and it was a what was it a ten thousand gallon tank? I did all that stuff. No infectious bacteria in my catchment tank. Hey, I used to have to shower with that water too, and wash my dishes with it, and do my laundry. Was I going to do that to myself? Was I not going to keep that up? Of course I was. Of course, I even had my water analyzed every now and again. You no know, fecal matter from rats in my Catchment tank, as some people proclaimed. You gotta understand, I'm not a germ freak, but I'm a germ awareness person. And there's no way in the world I'm gonna have all that bacteria shit on my skin or my brother's skin, or you know, or have my you know, you know, shower, bathe my dog with you know bacterialized water. I would never do that. So let's let's knock that out of the ballpark, okay? Yeah. Appraisal from City Inspector. What was your zone assessment by the city for your? What are you talking about here or Hawaii? I'm not sure what you're talking about. I've had multiple properties.、Uh, 
Do you have an appraisal from the city inspector? Oh, no, I, I, I did have an appraisal from a real estate lady, though, who just happens to live next door. It's part of her profession. Yeah, she wasn't a city inspector as far as that went. And I'd have to put the papers in front of me, the uh, tax declaration material. We got plenty of that. So I really didn't get a chance. But I, I know there's terrific value in the house already, uh, which we're very fortunate to have. Because like I said, we bought the house at a pretty damn good price. Even keep it in mind that there were things that we had to do around the place to make it attractive, uh, repaint a whole lot of stuff, replace tile, things like that. You know, there was a little bit of renovation, which cost us a pretty penny, probably over 20,000 American dollars. But the investment was worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. For your information, you need to see what the zone for your area says because mine was a surprise well you also have to keep in mind this is a resort town it makes a big difference john and you got to understand my proximity to the ocean is like a 12 to 15 minute walk uh and all these things uh, come into play okay they all come because like you always heard that expression location 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 whether you have a business like a store Whatever it might be, location is really important. Oh, they they did it. They did a full transfer here, no problem. Oh, we had no problems with that. God damn, we paid enough for this fucking. Whew, forgot what the figure was. It was high to do the tax declaration. It took a couple of months to get it back. I mean, it was like uh, really that long, but everything uh, went through swimmingly, and it's all good. You know, our taxes are not high on this house at all. What the hell did we pay on there? 400 pesos? I don't know. We didn't... 1,000 pesos? Maybe between 1,000 and 1,500 pesos a year. I think somewhere around there would probably be pretty good ballpark. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with our tax... To, oh, you, okay. We'll have to read over that papers if it said anything about current value or anything like that. I don't believe I remember an analysis on there. But I'll have to check that out. It's been a while since I've actually looked at it. I haven't had, had any need to actually actually look at any of that stuff on there. Where is everybody this morning? Did I block everybody? <laughs> I don't think I did. <laughs> is there a current show? Is Big Kevin on or something right now? I'm just curious. I haven't checked. I've been, I said I've been I'm busy around. I think I'm sitting on my ass all day, and I assure you that I'm not. Because first of all, I go crazy. Second... Just things that need to be done. I could, can't put everything on my significant other. I, I just can't do that. And I won't do that. We work together, you know. Yeah. I even did a cooking last night. I mean, you know, which I don't really like to cook anymore. I really don't. I used to do that on my own all the time. Never had a problem with it. But she doesn't mind. And I'd rather she did cook because she's a better cook than I am. She knows how to put things together in, 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 a, in a moment's notice that'll create a, a very wonderful meal. Me, it takes a little planning sometimes. John says again, the fee for the purchase price plus 6% for what they say it is worth just just hit me today. And it's a big chunk of change to have everything transferred properly. It was a big chunk of change. What the fuck was it? 160000 I'll have to ask. It was a lot of money. And it had to go to somebody in Cebu. It was handling it for us um and they had their hands full and uh yeah it was quite a chunk of money so people you know that are gonna buy a house if you gotta go if you have to go through the uh you know the tax declaration all that stuff uh be willing to have some extra money on the side because john blaze is right about that it takes a lot of money to buy a house I'm not talking about the fix-up. If you need any fixing up, you want to renovate or do something different. No, it's just a, it's the price of doing business to buy a house. That's that's the crazy stuff, you know. And some people don't want to put out that extra money. But if you went that far to buy a house, I mean, you know, you got to follow through, pay your taxes. But of course, the tax declaration is very important. Of course, you want to make sure any taxes owed on the house for the previous owner is paid, and he did. Owed very little, like 10,000 pesos was nothing. He took care of that. You know, everything was good to go. Everything was good to go. No other person was on his uh, his tax declaration as far as ownership of the house. It wasn't very complicated. It was just him and his wife. 
So it wasn't very complicated. Not really. Yeah. Okay, should do a video about that. But no, yeah. I mean, I, I just have to look at it again. Are you basically telling me that it gives me an idea of the value at the time? I, I remember. I don't remember reading that, but I guess I have to do some better reading. But it's been what a year and a half? It's almost two years. I don't know how long it's been. I, I tell you, folks, I have lost track of time. I lost track of time. That how long I've been in here? It's for as long as that I've been back from the Philip from uh, from Hawaii and more. Boy, does time go by really fast. Shit, I got a daughter now that's just turned 41 years old. Can you believe this shit? Wow, you know. Ah, winds of change. Winds of change. Trevor says that the median house in the United States is 434,000 US dollars. I'll buy a $20,000 US day house. In the yeah, you know, why not? I, I you know, I, I just think it's, uh, it's not going to be a growing trend to own any houses in the United States anymore because... People are taxed out of their income. Oh my God, in Hawaii alone, you got to see what the, uh, what do you call that tax is? Uh, oh, I forgot what they call that. It would a V. And a hotel tax is what they charge you on a hotel room alone. What do you call it? With a V, 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 with a V. But they use that terminology here. They, the VA something tax, something tax. That tax. Thank you very much. Yeah. Damn, I'm telling you, man. No, you can't. You cannot. You cannot own property in the United States anymore unless you're wealthy. You don't need American dream thing, you know, two cars in a garage, chicken in every pot, white picket fence. Well, I'm afraid to tell you that that's unfortunately a thing from the past. That's that's not happening anymore. Everybody's just trying to keep their heads above water, property tax, yes. And, you know, everybody's just trying to keep their heads above water. And I, I want to be well above the water line, you know. That's the way I want to live. I want to be above that water line. I don't want to drown. I'm never going to let that happen, no matter what. You know, I'm very happy I moved out of the United States. I think I moved out at an appropriate time because of all the changes going on in the United States, uh, the violence, the attitudes, the uh, taxation without representation, the uh, politics. I mean, I could go on with a laundry list. And, uh, you know, the Karens, all the Karens out in the United States. And, you know, it was it was an appropriate time, seven plus, seven and a half years ago, that I, I decided to leave America. And I'm going to tell you now that I have absolutely no regrets doing that. Well, that's the only thing that's been keeping pretty good out here. But they are going up. Condo prices are going Hey, look, I used to stay a lot over at that uh, Horizons building there, you know. I must have had 35 visits there. I don't go there anymore. Because I'm finding better places for the money. Uh, and also, they had their share of roaches there. Not a huge, but they did. I mean, you know. And these rooms are like uh, the size of, a, I don't know, a janitor's closet or something. They're, they're very small rooms. And probably higher now, but several years ago, I know that these tiny little closets that they're trying to sell sometimes, you know, they wanted at least 3 million pesos for basically a glorified fucking closet. You know, like what Yellow Man lives in. But at least they had toilets and showers and all that stuff, you know. But now an average is 5 million for a little rat hole. I mean, it's a, it looks like a nice building and all that. And believe me, I know that building very well. We're talking 35 visits. It has to be. It has to be. Over the years, must have been 35 visits. How many visits do I make to Cebu per year? And I'd go there. It was a convenient location. But then we had both mutually decided that we needed a change from that place because it seems that the people who were managing these units, these bed and breakfast people, they really weren't maintaining everything. They were using the same linens. They were starting to show wear and tear. Uh, cockroaches were there. And like, you know, you know, like we have like, you got cabinets, not the ones on the walls, but you got cabinets with the sink area. You got adjoining cabinets. Some of them are abutted against the other. And there's kind of like a space in between them. And you could look through there and you can see all the crud that fell in between there. And that's where roaches come. And roaches were coming out of the drains. And it, it just wasn't for me. I mean, you're probably not going to stay away from roaches at these hotels. Probably not. But, you know, at least the owners, you know, they're demanding, you know, a fair amount of money from these little units and they should be upkeeping them, but they really don't. 
They don't. They don't upkeep them. So, you know, we're always searching around for better places. And I haven't really found one yet. I'll plan one for my next trip and do some very good research. But, you know, hygienic is important to me. Well-maintained. I mean, it's my money. It's my money. They're making it in their pocket. If you're going to present the product, the product being a unit to rent, don't cheap out. Like, you know, roadside, these little roadside stand, calendarias, using the same fucking oil for like eight, nine months. I mean... No, man, don't cheap out on this kind of shit. If you want to get returning customers, the business logo on this, uh, I mean, is that, you know, our units are maintenance free. We update our units. They're hygienic. We clean. You know, the hot water heaters in the shower are going to work. Okay. Uh, and then I see mold on the ceiling, like in the bathrooms there. Black mold. No, 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 no. That's not acceptable to me. That is truly not acceptable to me. No, I mean, I'm sensitive to that kind of shit, to mold and stuff like that. I'm not going to put out money in a place and rent the room that I see mold in there. And the only reason maybe I've stayed here is maybe there were other units weren't available. But there were many times that we did change units while we were there. I said, and then they, the way they arranged the rooms in there, They got the, you know, in a lot of these units, they got the bed where it's not really, you know, eye to eye with the television they mount on the wall. You know, the television is kind of off center to this other part of the room. So you got to go turn your head way the other way to watch the TV screen. And look, let's face reality. Most people watching TV, they're going to lay in the bed and watch. They want to have that on the wall in front of them, correct? In that unit, they might have had like a couch or something. They... They had it so the couch was sideways, too. You still have to turn your head, you know, like, you know, 180 degrees or something, you know, to watch the TV. They have they have no sense of design. No sense of design. Look, what keeps people coming back is when you've got a well-designed room, even if it's really small. It's got to be functional. has to be maintained. Don't cheap out on the linens. And one thing I've noticed that they use in Horizons, they use this, uh, it's either a Febreze spray. It's a very pungent spray to make the room smell good, but you can smell it in the hall. Sometimes you come in the lobby of Horizons and that's what you smell. It's not good. And, and I mean, how about if you have, you know, people going to rent your place and what if they have allergy problems? What if they're super sensitive to these perfume sprays? Do they not care about the people? They want their money. They want their money. They want to rent it to you, but they're not thinking not of your comfort. I've had beds in there that are so rickety racky they were thrown together. They were worse than, uh, what do you call that Swedish company? You know, it was worse than that shit. They wanted to, they did not want to put out any money in these units. They wanted to make it as basic as they possibly can hello bill smith they want to make these units as basic as they possibly can to cheap out and profit as much as they could but you see folks when they do that when you use cheap furniture that's not going to last guess what there's going to come a time when you're going to have to replace that furniture so why not buy some quality furniture that's made to last real wood not plastic or fucking cardboard, particle board. You get some nice furniture. And guess what happens? Guess what happens when you do that? Take a wild guess. What happens is that same customers that have been, you know, renting your space, they come into Cebu, they are going to come back again and again and say, oh man, all right, this is the place. Well, maintained, we're not seeing cockroach problems. The shower water heater is working. Uh, everything was designed in that room you know, in proper proportion. The TV screen ain't like on the other fucking side of the room. You know, I mean, let's face it, people like to lay in bed and watch TV. Not everybody wants to go to some uncomfortable little piece of shit couch, which is, you know, uh, you know, other side of where the bed is behind like a wall or something and sit there in an uncomfortable piece of furniture and hurt your back. And people want to lounge on their freaking bed. Most people, I mean, I do. 
I do. I do. I certainly do. I want to be comfortable. I'm paying the money. So yeah, to find the best accommodations, let's face it, uh, even the places that charge a lot more money that are better, nicer prices, uh, they still have their bugaboos too. Are they really the so-called nicer name hotels? Are they really worth the price to pay? Look, you see, when I go to Cebu, you know, I'm not spending all my time in a hotel room. I don't need necessarily a fancy address just to show everybody, hey man, look where I'm staying. Although we know some people who do do that. You just want a place that's going to accommodate you for two, three, four days that you're staying there. You want something that's uh, hygienic. You want a bed that's, you know, reasonably comfortable. You want a water heater that works. You want to know that the room has been cleaned. You're not spraying these fucking neurotoxins in the room to cover up any smells of, of like, you know, dampness or something. You know, this this fucking neuro neurotoxins in these spray cans that they use to cover up smells. Did you not know that? Well, you know it now if you don't know it. They don't care that maybe you're allergic to some kind of a perfume smell. They don't ask you on the paper. They don't ask you. By the way, we spray this piece of shit in this room. God damn it, they even sprayed in the fucking lobby to, to make, you know, I, I've smelled garbage in Horizons lobbies. I've smelled the smell of trash. It was disgusting. It's a newer building. It's got a good location. And if anybody knows about this place, it's me and Gilda because we've been there 30, 35 times in the history of our tenure out here. That's how many times. Come on, thumbs up, folks. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, baby. And I think I solved... I didn't really solve the problem of the Super Chat. I had a text thing going with them this morning about 25, 30 minutes ago. Prior to me actually putting on this show. They said, your Super Chat's showing up. And they showed me some people who sent Super Chats. I said, well, how come I'm not seeing it on my screen? What's with that? What is with that? I don't know. But she said, here... William O'Leary, they went through some names of who sent me Super Chats. Oh, okay. I guess they did, but why was my screen lighting up? I I, I, I don't know. There's some things I know, there's some things I don't claim to know. But as long as you're coming in, I mean, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, it's appreciated. Of course it is. Of course it is, guys. Remember, I'm here simply because you're there. I have no reason to be here. No reason at all. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, be, be very diligent when... You're going to be going to any of the major cities. You're going to visit. You want to get a hotel room. You know, you're paying the money. Not, not, you know, Joe Schmuck down the street. It's coming out of your pocket. Tell the owners. Say, look, I've been coming here for whatever. And I'll continue to come here. But, you know, I happen to like this particular room. But you got to spend some time on maintenance in here. you got to spend some, you know, just like location, location, location. You want to have a store. Now, why would you want to have a... You know, a little sorry, sorry store next to a a huge department store or something or that sells food and hardware and everything else. It's all location, location, location. I know even in my town because DIY opened up here, do-it-yourself place. And, you know, they sell all kinds of shit in there. And we have numerous similar type of stores that have been here but really sell crap. They don't give you a variety of stuff and... It's a matter of time before they go out of business. In fact, the pizza place that I was going to all the time is the nearest thing to anything edible at the time. Closed down. And remember when I said that I'd order pepperoni pizza all the time? We don't have any pepperoni. Things are that bad. But we could offer you Hawaiian. You know, what, what's a, what was a can of Hawaiian, chopped up Hawaiian pineapple course you just throw it on a pizza? Pepperoni, of course, costs more money. So I kind of knew that was going to happen, and my prediction came true. They closed down. Went by it the other day. Said, what? Really? Okay. Well, I had lost my business anyway because don't announce you're going to have pepperoni pizza. But you don't have it. A couple months later, they still don't have any pepperoni. Jesus Christ, I'll donate them, donate them a, blo a block of fucking pe pepperoni if it's that bad for them. I mean, Jesus Christ, really. And they go out of business. People try to start businesses. Some make it, but... Most of them fail. It's the course of doing business, progress. The big dogs move in and they sell better items than you do. You're going out of business. Mom and pop stores are going out of business. They're going out of business, but they're still being greedy on their prices. And this is what forces these businesses to close their doors. Greed. Greed, I tell you. Greed. Come up with a good idea for a store, but then the bigger dog 
moves in that's selling the kind of stuff that you want to sell, but they're giving you a bigger variety and maybe at a better price. I know one store that's been here for quite a while, and I don't think they're making good business. There's another store that opened up that had this kind of general stuff again. They're going to close out because DIY, DIY opened up here, and I think、uh, they're going to close at some point. Uh, it's it's the smaller mom and pop stores, and DIY is actually I think a franchise. Yeah, I believe they are. So this is what happens, and let's just say that a real supermarket opens up in a your price. Of course, you got little grocery stores, mom and pop type operations. Though, might as well call them glorified, you know, sorry sorry stores, but they really are just bigger space, but selling the same shit. There's all the other sorry, sorry stores. They don't last. The big boy comes into town, an actual supermarket. They're out of business. They be less employees. They're going to start to starve. And a lot of employees are going to wind up signing applications to work for that supermarket. Isn't that the way that works? Yeah, it is the way that works. But that's the price of doing business. It's called competition. Competition. You wipe the other one out. You're not purposely trying to do this to harm somebody's. Living, but business is business, and they understand. They're not happy about it. The small mom and pop operations, you know, with sorry, sorry stores and all that. You know, I, I don't really think they're getting butt hurt over it. I think they too realize that it's just the price of doing business. Too many sorry, sorry stores to begin with. That's too much competition just for them alone. But you got to understand, people got to make money. Some have no education. Don't have any good jobs. The possibility of you got to do something to bring just a few. I mean, it's horrible when I see in the streets. Someone walking around, or maybe near the beach with foul, foul jewelry, you know, fake jewelry. Or you see in town, you see people, you know, what even pass by your house trying to sell you something, you know? Or these little stands on the side of the road in town where this poor old lady just has like a couple of items on there to sell, a couple of bananas left, a few pieces of fruit. Maybe she made a little few shomai, tatiza. You know, and hey, you don't laugh at this stuff. This is the reality of poverty. They, if they can make enough coinage to buy themselves some rice for their next meal, they're doing good. It's called survival, folks. Survival of the fittest. You have to eat, and there's a lot of respectable people that are poor that don't want to go around begging. They want to earn their money. They want to earn it, and we applaud them.、And、that's why I get generous sometimes when I can afford to. If I'm in that generous mood, and I see somebody having a really hard time. I think of myself in that position. I I just can't. I I you know get a rope and hang myself. I I just couldn't do that.、I、couldn't live with myself. I couldn't live that way. Just remember, as you get older, you want to live better. Isn't that the whole idea? It's called retirement, folks. That you get older, things get better for you. But you want to live a better life. You don't want to live in some fucking shack that you put together with windblown, fucking rotted. You know, water, water. You know, fucking messed up wood from moisture, termites, and that's that's a retirement as a foreigner. I can see that happen locally here, but I I just can't see. I just can't see a foreigner living that way. Can you? I, I just can't. It doesn't make any sense. Why? Why? What is it? The Why Me massacre? Why? 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 But you put yourself through that. Unless you had a horrible situation happen to you, and you lost all your money, and you know, and it's not cutting it on your on your social security or your pension. I understand that. You know, shit happens sometimes. You know, when you don't plan it. That's life. Let's face it. You go to live. You go to die. You go to do everything between life given to you and life taken away from you. And what you do with your life is going to determine your future. When you hit that social security age, when you go to retire. No matter where you retire, all that comes to fruition. Everything comes to fruition on how you're going to live. Forget the made-up stories of what I used to own, how much knowledge I have, and I had a barge and I had sports cars. But where are you now? Where are you now? That's the question. Where are you now? Okay. You gotta live for the present. When you get a certain age, don't think about the future except making sure that. You have your finances together, but basically live day by day, live in your present, take care of some things that's going to be affecting 
your future or your par- partner's future. That's the best advice I could actually give you. It's the best, the only advice I could give. You. Do it the right way. I know you want to come out here for the young chicks, man. We've established that, but it's more than that, man. You got to think of your survival. If you're going to hook up with some chick, are you not going to buy her dinners for her and everything else? Yeah, right. If you're stupid enough, you're not going to buy her cell phones and everything else to have her stay with you. It's money, and you know it's not endless. You know you don't get money growing off trees. You know, in some fantasy land, perhaps, but. In reality, money does not grow on trees. Okay, get real. Get real. Get with the program. Make your life a little easier. Breathe easier. As a result of that, and if, there's, if the room is not to your approval, talk to the owner or the representative that's managing these rooms and say, "Hey, look, I've been coming here for years. You made buku bucks on me. I think it's time to maybe pay a little bit more attention." The details in these rooms: detail cleaning, not just superficial cleaning. Like they're going to sweep the floor, put a couple of rolls of toilet paper in there, put a couple of fresh towels up there, perhaps. That's not how you run a business. And if according to what you're going to charge, don't you know, put some quality stuff on the TV, some HBO, something on there. How many rooms I've rented? You hardly get anything on there from you. Go surf the channel. There's nothing on there. This channel does not support whatever. Waste your money for this. You're lucky to find anything worthwhile even seeing in the damn room. Fuck the TV. Throw it out the fucking window if you're gonna do that. If you're gonna demanding good money for that room, make it worthwhile for people to rent. Okay. Anyway, I gotta go, folks, and thank you for stopping by. I appreciate your patronage. I、uh, will talk to you on another show, and、uh, I gotta begin my day. And I still haven't eaten because I just don't know what to eat anymore in the morning. I got to go back and get some some mucilage or something. So where did I buy it last time? Believe it or not, believe it or not, the drugstore Mercury in Bantayan has mu- muesli. I like muesli. I can't eat all that shit anymore. All the other cereals are be total fucking shit. Okay, and you know, I eat oatmeal with the blueberries, but I, I, I don't have it every single day. That's probably what I'm going to be forced to do this morning because you know keep that cholesterol down. Eat those life-giving, life-giving blueberries. Life-giving. I'm here because you're there. Thank you for watching and patronizing my channel. We will talk to you on the next little fireside chat. We will.